Hello, and welcome to this edition of School Notes. I'm Xavier Williams. A Sims Middle School technology teacher received some very exciting news before the division went on winter break in December. Connor Dunn applied for a grant from the Northrop Grumman Foundation and was a finalist for the $100,000 Fab School Lab Science Classroom Makeover Contest. There were five winning schools nationwide, and our superintendent, Dr. Jeffrey Smith, surprised Mr. Dunn with the news in his classroom. Hi. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Hi. I'm Jeffrey Smith, superintendent. Oh, nice you, to meet you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. We're here with a special announcement today. Something regarding Northrop Grumman in terms of Fab Lab Makeover uh, to share with you that um, you're the recipient. Uh, here oh my gosh, of a $100,000 lab makeover and so we have an early holiday present for you to make that announcement and to say congratulations to you and uh, we're very excited and so I'm so happy I can't wait to tell my mom <laughs> I'm a little overwhelmed um, I'm trying not to cry I'm just tears of joy and happy uh, a lot of my students put a lot of hard work into the video and I've had a lot of support with just all the staff and administration, superintendent, my boss for career and technical education and uh, I do want to give a shout out to my mom, she's my biggest fan and I'm a mama's boy so uh, I, I can't wait to tell her because I know she's going to be so proud of me. But I really want to get more into the synthetics and more of the material processing instead of just wood. So I'd love to do something with metal. Uh, I'd love to do something with fiberglass, but with fiberglass, there's a lot of safety hazards with it. But um, I do want to start doing a lot more rapid prototyping with 3D printers. I really want to get a laser cutter engraver. Just teaching kids or exposing them to all the technology at such a young age gets them interested. I mean, why would you want to pay someone else to do something when you have it, you're capable and you have the skills to do it yourself? We're very excited to see what is in store for Mr. Dunn's classroom and we'll follow up with him during the school year. Phillips Elementary held a ribbon cutting ceremony to mark the completion of their breezeway enclosure. It gives students covered passage from building to building. Phillips is the fourth elementary school to have this kind of makeover. We've really increased security, uh, not only uh, with the kids' movement, but also when we have guests to the building. Um, this particular breezeway was built with a security vestibule, or at least that's what I call it, um, so that parents and other visitors um, buzz in at the front of the building and they're seen on camera and they can um, state their purpose and who they are. And then they come into the building and go to the main office before they can pass to any other area of the building. Now with this breezeway, we don't have to worry about them being out in the cold. They can just walk right on through and it's just gonna be so much better for all involved. The breezeway is definitely gonna make the neighborhood look beautiful. That's just riding by, it totally looks like a totally different school. It's gorgeous. Um, it's well needed, well long deserved to have this and I just think it's going to help the whole neighborhood having the school that Breezeway put in there. Phoebus High School students had the opportunity to meet with potential colleges and employers recently. The fair hosted numerous vendors and gave students the chance to discuss their career and college plans one on one. Today we have about 32 people, we had a few cancellations but still a good turnout. So we have some four-year colleges, some trade schools, um, some employers like Marshalls and First Advantage and Old Point who are actually looking to hire entry-level people right away. Um, and then of course we have the military as well. Yeah, I love coming to this event. This, I believe, is my 13th year, and every year I meet so many good students from Phoebus. As, as a representative for Johnson & Wales University, I talk to the students about our programs in culinary arts, marketing, business, and it's a great fit because the programs in Phoebus, um, as well as for some of the students who come from Kickatan and the other Hampton City Public Schools for the culinary program here, are wonderful candidates for the Johnson & Wales College of Culinary Arts. It's like, it's really informative. You get a lot of information. Like, even if you weren't sure about college, they have like stuff about the Army and the shipyard and stuff you can do coming right out of high school. So if you weren't sure college was the path for you, there are other things that you can do. So, I mean, I think it's, it's a really great thing because it's not just for like seniors, everyone, like all grades can come to it, so you can find your career path. 
35 Hampton High School students from Mr. Frederick's art class participated in an internationally known memory project. The organization asked for art students from around the world to create one-of-a-kind portraits for disadvantaged children. Hampton was connected with Madagascar. Once the portraits are complete, the memory project staff delivers the artwork in addition to a monetary donation. During the exchange, photographs are taken of the excited children, which are sent back to the artist. Jones Magnet Middle School students received a special treat from the Joint Base Langley Eustis Air Force Rock and Roll Band, the Blue Aces. Come on, come on. Students were able to see professional, enlisted musicians perform as a reward for good results on critical skills assessment testing. The kids had a wonderful time. Um, the, I think that they were surprised that it was a rock band and it was a lot of the pop music that they all listened to. So I think they really loved it. Everyone in the building commented that they were talking about it all day. And you know, I think the Air Force musicians are great role models for our kids. All have at least one degree in music. Um, many of them, most of them, two degrees. And there are a few even who have three degrees um, on their instrument or voice. It's a great thing for our kids to be a part of and get to see that that's a possibility for them even when they um, continue on past high school and college. Students at Bethel and Kikatan High Schools receive Google Chromebooks as a part of the digital learning program. It is a pilot program at the two high schools and will be fully implemented at a later date. We'll have much more on the distribution of the computers in the next episode of The Digital Bridge, which is coming soon. The Digital Bridge is a new show produced by PEG TV and hosted by Paul Lawrence, the Director of Information Literacy. You can catch the show at these times on television. Now, let's check out what's happening on Hampton City Schools social media outlets. On Twitter, you can see students from Bryan Elementary experiencing hands-on learning in Ms. Brown's and Ms. Thompson's fifth grade classrooms. Andrews pre-K through eight students create comparison charts in Ms. Leonard's third grade classroom. On Facebook, you can see Lindsay Middle School spelling bee champions and Phillips Elementary students investigating sound by using straws and plastic strips. Also, pre-kindergarten registration has begun. Please check out Hampton City Schools website to find out all the information and dates needed to register your child. Thanks for watching this edition of School Notes. Please send us your story ideas so we can share what's happening around Hampton City Schools. Remember, it's every child, every day, whatever it takes. I'll see you next time.